layers. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> so I've got the scene loaded up here. And let's go ahead and run this real fast. I think I've got my music turned down. Okay, so my draw calls are really low right now because my lights are off. I haven't done the baking on here. So my lights are on. And let's kind of see here. We've got 190 draw calls right now. That is a lot. Very, very bad for mobile. This will be bad. Now, right now, I've already got some saved because some of the objects on the scene right now are already optimized. Unity is telling us how many have been batched together to save draw calls. So we've got 115 calls that have been batched as opposed to having them on this side. It's saving those. So we want to increase this number and reduce this guy right here. So let's take the environment here, organize quite a bit and taking all the crosses. So if we just click on the cross here, we're taking all of these crosses and put them under one game object here. Now these guys will not move at all. So I know I can come in here and mark them all as static. How do I do that? I put them all in a parent game object here, just like you were showing us with the lights. Mm -hmm. So what I do here, everything is in a game object. I've got crosses, we've got plants, trees, all organized because that helps us to just come over here. Let's undo this first so I can show you how we do it. This guy right here, static. We want to make sure we check this off. We know these objects aren't moving. You're telling Unity this is highly optimized, it's going to be optimized, this isn't going to move at all. In fact, you get weird effects if you try to move an object that you actually have marked as static. For example, if you were to put a cube in your scene that was marked as static, yep. you would see your collider move, but the actual mesh would stay still. You get some weird effects. So you want to make sure yeah. that these things are only ones that stay still. And I'd say that's a common problem too when you're developing. If you attach scripts to certain things that are dynamic and let's say have traps in your level or different things that are going to work and they're supposed to be moving a certain way, but they're just kind of acting funny, always remember to go back in there and check that static setting and make sure that's checked off if it's it's dynamic or on if it's just going to be a static object that sits in your scene. Good point. Now because I've got all these child game objects underneath the one called crosses, it says, hey, do you want to enable this for all of the children? Yes, change children, that's what that says there. Do we want to enable static flags with children? This one is what we want, yes. Change children. They're all marked as static. Just like that, let me play the scene here. Notice, so let's go and Undo everything here. Check this out. Save by batching, 51. I checked it off. Come back over here. 115. So without it, 51. With it, 115. Now, again, we see these raw calls being so high because my lights. Let's assume I baked my scene. Because right now we were at, let's look at that value again. So I've, I've increased this by checking off static for my crosses. My draw calls are still huge, 193. I'm going to assume my lights now have been baked. Run that again. And now I look at this here. I'm down to 26 draw calls. Very mobile friendly right now. Very mobile friendly. Perfect. Save by batching is lower because we actually have the lights combined with a lot of other objects off now. So that's why we're seeing this other optimization here. All right, now secondly, let's talk about the atlasing built into Unity. I'm gonna create a new scene for that. And in here, I'm going to take, I've just got some 2D graphics here to show you what would happen with some 2D stuff. This concept works with really any 2D. I'm just gonna take these and throw a bunch into my scene. I'm gonna go into 2D mode here, this little 2D button here, just so I can drag and drop my textures into there. These are 2D textures. In a 3D project, when you bring in a texture, it actually comes in as texture type texture, which you can't drag and drop into a scene. On a 2D project, or if you change it on a 3D project, if you want to be able to drag and drop them into your scene, you want to make sure these are set to 2D and UI, in other words, a sprite. Now I can just drag and drop these. As I drag all these in here, notice I'm starting to increase my draw calls down here. Now I don't have much stuff here, so it's not a ton. Actually, I don't want to create an animation, that's why it's asking me that, because I dragged a bunch of my sprites in there all at once. So my draw calls kind of start to increase here a little bit. So what I can do with all these guys, let's assume I've got many, many 2D assets in here. I can take all of these here, and I've enabled the Sprite Packer. So under Window, we have Sprite Packer. Sprite Packer is disabled. Enable it in Project Editor Settings. So let's go ahead and enable that in Project. Edit Project Editor Settings. Sprite Packer mode is disabled. I'm going to say I want this always enabled. 
Now when I go back to Windows Sprite Packer, we have our Sprite Packer enabled here. And I'm going to want to click on this first button there, which is Pack. But in order to do that, I need to have told it, told Unity, how should I pack all these together? You kind of want to keep similar colors, similar groups together. Uh, these are all fairly similar. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to tell Unity, all of these guys right here, I want a packing tag. It's just text. We're going to call this platforms. So this is so how it knows how to combine everything together. We'll call that platforms, apply. So Unity is going to say everything with this packing tag of platforms, just text, we're going to squash together into one atlas so we can draw them all out at once. Now we come into the Sprite Packer, now that we've set our packing tag, and we just pack this guy, pack, filtering out to Atlas 1 of 1. Let's increase the size of this a little bit. And if we look here, now it's taking all those images, and it has one texture with a couple different pages in it. So these are all now on essentially one image, and Unity knows behind the scenes how to map each of these to each object over there. So it's a real easy way just to come in here and kind of pack everything onto there. I mean, of course, I just have a real, real generic scene here. So that's one way that you can use to pack all your stuff together inside of Unity. You can also do it outside of Unity as well. Uh, prior versions of Unity, the Sprite Packer was in preview mode. That is now out of preview mode. We don't see uh, developer preview only or whatever it used to say on there. In 4.6, it's now uh, just listed as Sprite Packer. So Matt, why don't you take us through, since we've looked at the 2D side, we looked at uh, batching as well, maybe take us through how you might do something in the 3D world. I know you had a really cool rubble texture on there that took advantage of the, the 3D uh, laying out into a 2D, right? Absolutely. So um, a lot of things I like to do when I optimize the objects in my game, and I, I want to make sure that you want to have all your objects kind of sharing different textures. You know, don't have too many 3D objects with all individual textures, because when you do that, those are essentially draw calls, right? So each object you can think of as one draw call. So it's better to take, and draw calls are based on materials, right? Yeah. So the more materials I've ever seen, every material you have is essentially one draw call. So you want to try to combine, combine, combine as much as you can. So for the sake of what we did within this, within our demo, We'll look here. Let me just turn my ambience back up so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Lights are everything. You look that I've got a couple different objects in here, and I wanted to save on the draw calls, because if I had each of these as individual materials, it would be a lot of draw calls happening at once. So what I did was combine things. And this is really great when you use things like transparent elements, right? So for transparent elements, I have a couple things going on. I have my plants right here that are based throughout your scene. And then I have these little like, god rays, rays elements right here, right? And you'll see what I did in those particular elements. And normally Absolutely. they would all have a separate texture, each one separate. Absolutely, they would. Each a draw call, mm -hmm. they're all separate. But in order to save on the draw calls, I wanted to combine those elements together. So what I did was in 3D, when I made these objects in 3D, and you can see kind of right here, the actual 3D kind of wireframe I used to make that, I went in to the texture. If we go into the actual plant, you'll see right here, there's two things happening in this texture. I'll try to open that up. And it's a little hard to see because of the background, but you'll see that I have, one, I have my plant leaf that I painted, but I also put that fade for those rays, the rays also in there. So these two objects are essentially changing, or using the exact same texture. And the reason these ones are is because they both share transparency. So, you know, with transparency, you have a transparent element and you can see through it, right? And the same with the ray is a transparent and you can see through it. And all, I, I would suggest if there's little elements like that, if you have fades or any elements like that on your scene that you're gonna be using a lot of, put them all on the same texture because those are really gonna kill performance and add probably even more draw calls because of overdraw and things like that. So you wanna make sure on your transparent elements you do the same thing. Now for actual kind of solid elements in the game, I did the exact same thing and I try to be creative with, with my textures as well. And you wanna really think of that when you're creating your levels and doing things. So for the Rubble, right here, I have all these rubble pieces on the path as the character runs. You've got all these different bricks and different pieces that sit in here. But for these, I did the same thing. These share the same texture with this giant cross in the middle. So I have this cross, and that's the element you're going to protect and everything. But on here, I did a couple of creative things. I said, well, this base actually uses the same repeatable texture over and over again, this kind of triangular little piece right here. And then I have the elements I cut out for the cross as well. But then I had extra space on this texture that I created. So you can see right here, I have my cross 
We've got the base for the cross, the different pieces. Here's the base of the texture. And instead of using a ton of different sections for that, I just made one, repeated it over and over again. And all those different UVs kind of use that exact same spot. And that freed up a lot of space on my texture that I can use to do different elements. We'll zoom in here so you can see. So over here, I've got my rubble pieces. And those are those pieces I have that are kind of littered across my my uh, stage, and then I have some other pieces for more row. I had a lot of room in here to do a lot of different pieces. And so you just really, really, really want to be careful as you're making things to create UVs. You don't need, you know, specific textures for different things. You do, but they can all be, if you have room on textures, take a piece and create it in that texture you're already using. I did the same thing with the trees, and that's probably a, a really good example because you can really see the two defined elements. So right here was the tree I made. And you can see the texture for the tree I made, which is right here. And essentially what I did on that tree was I just made one texture for the bark of the tree, the central element. And then I reused that piece over and over and over again to do all the branches. It's kind of in the distance, you don't really see it. So I have just that one element and all those pieces are using that exact same element, which is this whole piece right here initially was the trunk that I cut out. And then I used part of that trunk to make the different branches in 3D, cool. right? And then on that space, that gives me a ton of room because if you were going to do a tree and have all these different added textures and stuff, it'd be kind of littered across your texture and they'd be all over the place. But doing that gave me tons of room on here to add more elements. So I, you know, I put a huge boulder in here and textured that as well. So because these two elements are using that same texture and they're marked as static, I have all of these trees scattered around my project. I got one, all two, three, all in different locations, different sizes, different, you know, I skewed them differently to make them appear as they're all different, you know, rotate them differently, but they're all exactly the same. And because they're all marked as static, you're getting one draw call because it's batching all of that together. It's basically thinking of that as one material and one thing it has to edit. And so you're basically, I think maybe one, maybe two draw calls it might get. And that just depends on the CPU. But when you do that, you save a lot. I did the exact same thing with the wall back here too. I did one texture for the wall. And with that texture, oh, open it up here. I've got a oh, couple that, things. Yeah, cool. I've, got, I've got the wall itself, which I used to do this repeatable texture for the wall. And that's this right here. And then for the top of the wall, I used this repeatable texture right here. And then I took that model and I cut it down and did a variation on it. And I used this area of my texture to do kind of like that broken part of the wall, right? And then from there, I wanted to do a column of the wall too. And so I made this third model, oh, whoops, get back out of there. I made this third part of the model, which was this column right here that I use the exact same texture to kind of use the UVs and reuse, repurpose that texture to make more elements. So from there, I was able to get three kind of unique models. I did a broken wall, I did a uh, flat wall, and then I did a column with a cross on top of it that are all using the exact same texture. And that's one draw call. And you have all these elements, all you can do all kind of unique cool. things. Yeah, and do really, really cool stuff with it. So that's just a really good tip. And you want to be very cognizant of that when you're building your levels, that you can take all these pieces, combine them, Combine, combine, combine as much as you can to build a lot of unique pieces with one, one material. And save on performance, because remember that draw calls affect CPU. Absolutely. You reduce it all out, very cool. And these work really great when you're doing things like castles and other things like that. You wanna make sure that you just throw all that stuff into one material that all these objects can use. You're really gonna save on your draw calls and you're really gonna get great gains out of the performance of your game. That's cool, well. yeah. very cool. So very important tips to remember. Yeah. Let's move on to some other tips that we've got here. Uh, compression. Compression, typically very easy inside of Unity. Uh, you can compress inside of Unity per platform. You can figure out uh, which devices you want to target. So if you're going to go into Windows Phone versus Windows Store versus iOS versus Android, etc., you can change your compression on there. Uh, now, universal apps don't support compression per platform. And I'll show you this in a second. And this, this affects not just Windows. There's other platforms that have the concept of universal apps. But the idea is that when you want to take one texture, it might be a high resolution on a, let's say you're gonna be running on a PC. If you're gonna be running on mobile, you want that compressed down quite a bit. And inside of Unity, under, let's take some of those textures that I had before, like some of those platforms. If I click on them right over here, Unity shows me the quality right now. So for, let's say I'm going to build for the web. I might have, uh, right now I have a default size of 1024. But let's say on Windows, phone, I want to override that value and come down to maybe 256. Let's just look at that real quick here. 
kind of notice the resolution that's on here. I'm gonna override for Windows Phone. And you just drop this value down here. So I'm gonna take this, just for the effect so we can see it more. I'm gonna chop down, that's 3.8 megs. 